The very first thing you're probably going to notice when you pull this out the box is that the stars are not pronounced. Usually when you have a Jordan 1, an Air Force 1, a Nike Dunk Low High SB, doesn't really matter. You usually have a very, very pronounced stars pattern that they use throughout the, the usually the front of the shoe. And this time it's there, but it's subtle. Uh, you know, they're definitely not as pronounced as you would get on a Jordan 3 Retro. Second thing I notice is that they have this orange piping or this orange stitching going across the entire midsole of the shoe. Now to some people that's not going to be a big deal, but to others if it's going to stand out. You're not going to be able to hide it. And it may even affect some of your wardrobe choices. Next obvious thing that I looked at was the bottom it's all white it is all white expect this to be immediately dirty once you take them out the box and you take a couple of good steps um it's just one of the things to expect when you have white bottoms i don't even honestly i don't even really waste my time even trying to to clean the bottoms are the are sometimes not even the midsoles but yes sometimes i will go back and get the midsoles but definitely when you have a white bottom, it's a lost cause, right? So the next thing that you're going to probably notice is what the heck is that attached to the Nike sign? And I'm assuming it's a fin. Um, the shoe is called Rainbow Trout. And as you did see earlier with the fish symbols in the shoe, this, is a, this, had, this shoe has a fishing concept behind it. Hence the name Rainbow Trout. For you guys out there who are really into fishing, maybe you know what this is. Maybe it looks like something different to you. Because, I mean, and the other thing I could think of was maybe it looks like it could be a hook or something um, that would get caught in the fish's mouth. Uh, but also, for those that get the shoe, you're going to notice that one of the reasons why they call this Dunk Rainbow Trout is because when you turn the shoe and it catches certain light, the swoosh turns slightly purple. as if to give a rainbow effect and I'm assuming the fish's scales and the fish's skin does the same thing because when you notice that the Nike check is kind of built like how they how they did uh, the same effect with the Yeezy 2's a long time ago where it had like the, the, the scales and the reptile looking skin effect to it and that's kind of what they did here what all the sparkles are, not not sparkles but i don't really know what you would what you would call these but what all that is i have no idea um if you guys have any idea what this design could be let me know drop a comment um i don't know who knows it who knows i could take guesses all day uh but if you want to hear my guess Maybe they colored the inside of this uh, like a deep blue or a darker blue for a look at the ocean. And I don't, ha I have no idea what these little bubbles would be. Maybe it's air bubbles. Who knows? But anyway, you will notice that. Another thing that you notice, obviously, is this huge Nike tab on the back here. And right under it with the hot pink or raspberry. Whatever you want to call it. Another thing that sticks out, obviously, is this ripstop material, right? You can see it's ripstop. You always can tell when it's ripstop by those lines in the material. Uh, you might have seen ripstop last on um, maybe some military uh, khakis. if you Not khakis, but uh, like fatigues and all that. They might be made of ripstop. Or you might have a backpack that's made of ripstop, etc., etc., In my opinion, the ripstop material for a toe box is not really smart. Um, in my opinion, this is probably going to show some nasty creases over the years. Just depends on how hard you wear these. But you could tell, like, most of the shoe, most of this dunk is ripstop material. It's a cheaper material. Um, I do like the hot pink on the inside for the rainbow trout and the design of the rainbow trout. 
Um, another win for this shoe is that it has this darker color insole, like this darker colored uh, everything on the inside instead of it all being white. You know, so you can wear these more often. You can wear these probably every day and you don't have to worry about really cleaning the inside and making them look brand new again, as opposed to having, you know, the all white near the ankle part and it just turns dingy after a few wears. Another thing you're gonna notice is that the laces, the lace tips are cheap. There's only one pair of laces as well. They didn't come with the second pair and, and they didn't um, try to add any colors and anything. Once again, if you notice, it says Nike Beaverton, Oregon, established in 1972. That's the same thing that this says. Now the labels say that this is, they label it as a Nike Dunk Low Retro SE2. And they say that the colors are Sequoia and Alabaster, right? But then you go to the second hand market uh, to try to find these shoes and they're gonna be labeled as Nike Dunk Low Rainbow Trout. So the sneaker game, they've always been coming up with these side names for the sneakers. Uh, but it's becoming it's becoming a challenge now to keep up with everything because you know now nowadays that they got more than one reputable site or so-called reputable site for sneakers now uh, it just depends on what one company names the shoe and the next thing you know if that name catches on or not because <laughs> I'm telling you try to uh, look for these shoes under under the regular name that's on the box and you're gonna have a hard time. But if you type in Rainbow Trout, they pop up immediately, which is crazy. Um, I'm assuming that this, um, the suede that's used around the toe box and throughout some of the parts of the shoe, I'm assuming that that's what you call the Sequoia, which is, it looks gray and it looks dark on, um, on camera, but it's really like a dark green in person. Um, I would say that if you're not, you know, if you're not looking at it on camera like when you actually get the shoe in person and you're looking at it you're gonna probably just be like oh okay this is just a dark gray it's not really a green um but your opinion probably will change when you go outside and you start putting it next to different colors um, other than that I like, I like the nike symbol right there now let's talk true to size or uh, or how do these fit in general. Now with me, and if you looked at other videos of mine, when it comes to Nike Dunks, when it comes to Nike Dunk Lows, I'm going true to size. And that's what I did with this. I got size 13, my true size. Um, that's what I would recommend that you guys go out and do. Now if you really want the shoe, but you don't have an opportunity to get your size, you probably would be all right if you have to go up a half a size. Um, personally, I wouldn't want to go up on full size uh, with Nike Dunks because you're going to have to tie the shoe tight to kind of keep it on your foot. Um, so I recommend going up a half a size if you don't have the option to get your true size.